Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. This video is going to feature three separate wizards. And yes, although they all look the same, they are very different individuals. These three wizards are seeking knowledge and information from the crypts, the runes, and the goblin caves, looking for any ancient scrolls possible to aid them in the mages guild and uncovering the secrets of this world. The mages have bestowed these novices a task to find any information possible with the inner workings of these underground dungeon worlds. Something the Mages Guild has long been interested in, but fearful to ever enter. So, going on this journey today, we have three separate ones. We have Mage Wilden, Mage Willard, and Mage Willard. And the first journey we're going to follow is going to be of Mage Wilden. As you may have saw, we took Quick Chant and only swapped Zap for Slow, keeping the rest of the pretty much base spell memory slots. So, Mage Willard isn't one to mess around, he wants to get right into the action, and he knows, through the teachings of the Mage Guild, the best place to go to find knowledge and information is in Howling Crypts. No dangerous, it has the biggest libraries, and the best types of treasure. Hopefully finding ancient scrolls to help him and his mage associates in learning new abilities and new knowledge. Wilden is often criticized for being a little too hasty, jumping into things a little too quickly. But, it's gonna prove some of those doubters wrong and hopefully make it out of here with those ancient scrolls that they all desire. The first rule of being a wizard is that you have to forfeit all desire for loot or treasure, or perhaps fame. The wizard's main purpose is to seek knowledge and information. That is what we're here attempting to do. And the first order of business for Wilden is to drop those pants, as he wants to go as fast as possible. This will be a bit of an uncomfortable sacrifice, as the cold, damp air of this dungeon will now creep under his frock into regions that he doesn't want to be cold. Moving on, we're going to be looting literally everything possible, as we need to escape with as much gold as we can get. Hopefully be able to find a decent spellbook. This mage feels barely lost without a spellbook, relying on this archaic, old-style wizardry that is the magic staff. People just don't do it that way these days. There's a new growing trend among all wizards and mages that spellbook is the answer. So right off the hop, fighting some mobs, beating them with our staff, and we hear a bit of a commotion. In order to deal with this commotion, I'm likely going to need zap, I'm gonna get that thing ready to go, in case this rogue gets a little too close for comfort. Sure enough, one zap does this poor rogue in, and he gives us a crossbow, which could be useful going forward. One thing I've never realized, did not realize wizards could use throwing knives, and I will be quite frank with you guys, this is probably the most I've ever played wizard. I think total, from playtest 3 till now, I might have an hour, maybe two hours on wizard. So, it's gonna be difficult. We're gonna do our best. I've been trying super hard on fighter. We're in a fight for our lives already, seeing some dark bolts being slung our way, and definitely means we're fighting a warlock, and I really hope that crossbow bolt landed. It could be the only thing that keeps them away from us. Fireball is the only real range option I have, as Zap's gonna get me way too close. As usual, Wilden's getting a little carried away with the fireballs, using them all up before, before we can consistently hit some targets, is a bit of a hasty decision. As fun as it is to throw those things, you go through them friggin' quickly. These two are claiming their innocence, saying they will not harm me. However, this mage is not a trusting one. Wilden decides to toss a bottle in their face and get on his way. As we decide to get a little bit of distance, switching to our throwing knives, hoping to slow them down a little bit. And really, at this point, we only have one option, considering there's a longbow on my back the second I started backing into that other corner. And now we're stuck down here. And the only way up is this staircase, which I need to get up quickly or else I'm going to be pinned by that longbow. Entering this room with a magic staff is not something I really want to do, and this is not going so well for Wilden. His haste and rushing to let him into basically a pit of death. You may be able to deal with a few of these, but seeing that Axeman Skelly pushing in my direction, I need to find a spot 
where I can start doing some damage with magic missiles. Clear a few of these mobs. This only leads down, which may have been a solid option. We're gonna try to go up. Maybe we can get around a corner. Or at least lure them up the stairs and then jump off, giving us a little bit of time to get out of here. Dodging a few arrows and some mobs. We make it up. Taking a breather. We are in all kinds of trouble. Pinned by an archer on either side. This is not going to go very well. We need one of these archers to die and die quickly. Unfortunately, getting hit with two arrows is not the way to do that. Off we go again. Without having any fireballs, I can't open these doors. I believe you need two of them. And then the longbow resurfaces. And now we see the struggle with this wizard. Mob clearing is fine when you have time to do it. When you run out of time or spells, it is a tough one. Unfortunately, Wilden's journey ended as he lived his life in haste. Looking around at some of the some of the other items that are on offer, everyone's running blues and pretty nice blues, which means normal lobbies still aren't that safe. Although, perhaps we can get some gear a little bit more quickly and match these players without needing purples or legendaries. Sadly for Wilden, no knowledge was gained, and now we must rely on Mage Willard to find his way through the dungeon successfully with one of these ancient scrolls. Mage Willard is a little more patient and maybe slightly more knowledgeable than Wilden, so he's going to take Goblin Caves on try and find some materials and items to help him get into Howling Crypts or Runes. This will perhaps propel him into some greater items, or perhaps he'll even find some hidden knowledge amongst these goblins. Not very likely for these simple-minded creatures, however, he's going to give it a try. The real knowledge and mysteries hidden amongst dungeons housing Lich King, Ghost King, and in the skeletal remains of Wraith and Skeleton Champion, great beasts and monsters of a world long past. World long past that had information and knowledge that has slowly been lost by the wizards and mages of this new, new and ever changing world. Being a mage or wizard has become less and less enjoyable and more about just beating things with your staff. Wizards of this world have been hunted and killed relentlessly by numerous bands of people and tribes and races as they also see the wizards and mages being too powerful as if they have some sort of hidden knowledge or hidden information that makes them too strong for this world. That is not quite true. However, some wizards and mages have not been following the number one rule. And this has led a great conflict amongst the wizards and mages of this world, as each believes the other guilds are at fault. And this is partially why Wilden and Willard and Willard have been sent here. They are seeking information for their guild, meaning they could maybe have some sort of power or information against the others. And now, even amongst the wizards, corruption and war has begun to break out. Something that no one ever thought was possible. Wizards and mages were always meant to share their information amongst each other for the benefit of the greater good. That has since changed, and now more and more burden is put on those that are good to try and save what was this wizardry world. So, looting goblin caves, once again, we're going to basically grab every possible item we can, hoping to find an ancient scroll. And also, try and establish a bit of a baseline so we can get spell books and other things of value when we return to the world above. And of course, right off the hop, we hear a barbarian close by, and we need to be extremely cautious. Basically, a barbarian with anything in its hands is threatening. Maybe not even anything in his hands is threatening to a wizard. A couple throwing axes, a few punches, could quite easily end Willard's run. Now, Willard's a little bit smarter. He's gonna play this patiently, not really run into any action right away. 
trying to find any way possible to give ourselves a little bit more space. We are tempted to launch a fireball. Knowing it will likely just crash into that cage will do us no good. Maneuvering our way around, we hope he hasn't hurt us. Or perhaps he isn't interested in butchering this poor wizard. Then we hear the sound to be a cleric spell, which was definitely Holy Strike. And it seems, judging by the top right hand corner, as much as these guys want a team, they are actually killers. Getting some distance. These guys give me a bit of space, thankfully. And knowing Centipede's down here, we're going to try to lure Centipede towards him. If it's even still here. We do find a portal, which we can pop open quite quickly, considering we have magical interaction speed. We're going to see if we can lure this thing towards them and make our escape. Any amount of gold at all is fine. Even 20 or 30 should fetch us a spell book. And we desperately need it, as this magic staff's just not quite cutting it. Trying to get the centipede close to them, get invisibility ready. We see a cleric heading in our direction. Should do enough to lure it away from us. I was thinking about turning back to see if, um, if they were fighting it, and of course, our little plan didn't even work. This is why we are called mage novices. The things just aren't quite perfect quite yet in the way in which we utilize our wizardry spells. So, escaping this one, we're going to take this gold, buy some stuff we desperately need. First order of business is to sell everything we've gathered. Which, truthfully, considering we weren't there very long and didn't have a great opportunity to find that much loot, it's not horrible. Sell all this stuff. Gets us, gets us about 50 gold, which should be enough to get what we need. I think we're going to grab a spell book, probably the cheapest one here. And then a crystal sword, just so we have some sort of melee option as our secondary. And the rest is just potions, and that's pretty much all you need to get yourself rolling on a wizard. Or at least, beginning to have a bit more fun. First, first level, or the first couple escapes on wizard, is absolutely brutal. It is, um, it is difficult, and basically just is do exactly what you saw me do there. Go into goblin caves, avoid people if you have to, get a little bit of gold built up, and then just run Spellbook and learn everything you can. That is what these wizards need to do to become great wizard scholars and master all their spells from their guild. It's just necessary. You have to get through those first few moments and just find a way to survive. Now with these few items, Will Laird's a little bit more comfortable Thinking maybe how encrypts, as there are many rumors and information suggesting there are great libraries, great libraries that were forgotten and abandoned, would be a wizardry dream to go and stumble into. Walls and walls of books that haven't been touched in maybe hundreds or thousands of years. Exactly what these three wizards are searching for. Jumping into how encrypts, well, Laird gets a pretty nice spawn. This is a spawn I truthfully didn't know existed. And you get, uh, get a few spiders that are kind of annoying for wizards to deal with, but luckily we have, we have our sword. Did want to try to magic missile that skeleton. I know there's more, so the second I pull out magic missile, there's probably gonna be another one show up. This should hopefully do the trick in one spell. Fortunately, no, as we clanged a couple of those into his shield and then take a smash from his sword. Hitbox on Crystal Sword is something I've never experienced. Comes out a lot quicker than than I often realize. You almost need to have it on their head the second you swing it. It doesn't really lunge into them or progress the attack hitbox that far forward. It can be an odd weapon. I've seen I've seen rumors and seen people suggest running it on other classes. However, it's just no way to really synergize or make make it really do that much more damage. And truthfully, the only thing this wizardry weapon is going to be doing a lot of damage to would be a fighter. And those things are becoming increasingly more rare to find. The human populations have become weaker and weaker with each uncovering of magical spells or unique abilities that provide invisibility or haste. It's becoming far too difficult for the human armies to deal with. They've often relied on 
wizards and mage guilds to provide them with information and protection. But lately, that's just not been the case. As previously mentioned, the world has been become increasingly divided. One nice thing about these magic spells that this wizard's handling, that magic missiles keeps you just far enough away to deal with most PvE if you have time and can basically feel your way around a room and figure out a solution to dealing with everything. You have lots of options. It's just using those options in the right order or getting yourself in the right situation so that you're not cornered. Pretty much what makes or breaks a wizard's successes. Basically, the higher your intellect, the better you will be. Checking this chest to see if we can find any ancient scrolls, we actually get somewhat ancient being itself, and that is a mimic. Luckily, we have this beautiful sword, and it will deal with him, deal with him in an okay manner. And unfortunately, no ancient scrolls, but we do find a crossbow that will give us at least an option. One more option for Willard is great. Even in a crucial moment, a crossbow could come in handy if we swap out a crystal sword. We're going to need all the options we can as we take a quick rest here to heal back what little HP we're missing. We're also going to need to use our meditate to try and get back some of those spells. Somewhat debated with myself multiple times whether meditate was really worth it, as you can get spells back while resting, and I find it a little strange you don't get HP back while meditating. At least that's how it worked for me. It seems a little odd you don't get HP back or have them both work at the same time. So, perhaps intense focus is better. This is what these wizards have been taught. That's what we're going to try to make work. Reading a magic missile, we got a few mobs here we need to clear. Take out this ranger before he gets too close. Like I said, it is quite nice being able to launch some magic missiles, clearing a mob rather quickly. And even even that zap is enough to take out a death skull. Interestingly, it wasn't enough to kill him with the initial damage, but the after damage did. Now we are in fact quite close to a room I've been kind of avoiding, which is this ancient dungeon. Now. This wizard is aware there is a hidden room here, judging by the work of past wizards and mages sharing with the guild. They discovered there's a hidden potion room quite close by. The only difficult thing is there's a ton of mobs as you try to make your way there. And not only that, a lot of traps. And more importantly, when you deal with these mobs, no matter how fast you kill them, you usually have to deal with a gas cloud. It's not that the gas cloud is that threatening or damaging, it's just the fact that it literally alerts anyone in the vicinity that someone has been here. You could be gone away from this room, and the players entering behind you would know, aha, we have someone cornered. So, we have to be very careful, which is why I kind of try to avoid zombies as much as possible, especially playing as a solo. It can be basically giant beacons signaling to everyone, come kill this, come kill this guy or come kill this poor wizard. And of course we get a couple of them. Luckily a few of them had stepped on traps so they didn't take a few extra hits. And we are extremely close to finding a little bit of information and perhaps something of value hidden in this ancient storeroom. Do find a health potion and what looks like an oil lantern, which will be useful. Now we have to move on, take our way further into the dungeon. We try to navigate through these traps and mobs without, without alerting too many people, also without taking too much damage. Old piece of cloth, not of much value or of much interest for the Mages Guild. We will get going in search of that hidden library. Once again, more mummies to deal with. Zombies in this case. Luckily we have this beautiful crystal sword, once again putting in work, giving us at least some sort of melee option to deal with these. As a solo wizard, managing your spells and how many spells you use is so crucial. 
any moment I could be fighting a team and need all my fireballs, all my zaps, literally every bit of utility or items, <laughs> you'll need them. You'll be forced to use as much as you can to take out anything. At this type of power level for this novice wizard, you don't really deal enough damage to two or three zap somebody. Perhaps three zaps could potentially kill the right target. However, a barbarian will rush through that and likely still have a bit more to give. So, you're gonna need all three of your zaps, or all five of them. And you're gonna need some haste and vizes, maybe a fireball, or a couple of them if you get yourself cornered by a team. And seeing how we don't have any clarity potions, it's a real struggle. You basically need to make sure every single one of your options is used to its fullest potential. And a clear example of this was Wilden, who wasted all his fireballs without really making any of them do enough damage. Here we are. Willaire just found the ancient library. However, unfortunately, our excitement is cut short as this place has been cleared of all mobs, and there were footsteps close to our left. Now as we enter, searching for any sort of information or items, we hear players to our right as well. Meaning this could be a team or multiple teams. We're gonna bust open the door to see if we can get a better look. And sure enough, we find a wizard likely not following the first rule of the mage skills. We smash a bottle at our feet, trying to get some distance so we can cast some spells. And this is a horrible way to use invisibility. I'm smashing myself right into two ice spikes. Horrible dodging. But we must return fire as quickly as possible, as this barbarian is now making up the ground very quickly. Throwing axe to the head, and that pretty much does it for Mage Willard. Fortunately, I now know how Jay Griffith feels. Every time he fights a barbarian, it's basically an unstoppable force. I think we quickly saw we did some damage to them. This is the wrong team I'm looking at. But we hit, I think we hit a couple of them with one of those fireballs. Yeah, this is the team here, I believe. We didn't do much. Eating two ice spikes is definitely not the play. And really, I was expecting fireballs in return. I was not expecting ice spike. And maybe that's something I should be using. Not quite sure if it's that viable solo. Let me know what you guys are using if you're a solo wizard or where you're going to play. So far, we've explored Howling Crypts and Goblin Caves and Willard and Wilden have not been that successful. So, we're hoping Willard will maybe find this ancient scroll. And he's going to jump into Ruins map. And one thing I should say about Willard, he was kind of known to be somewhat on the slower side of this wizardry world and amongst the Mages Guild, which is part of the reason why he's being sent on this quest in the first place, because they don't really see him as being a wizard that will ever make it in this world of intellectual power. He is quite, as you would say, quite an idiot. Sometimes he makes idiotic mistakes. So, being the way he is, we're going to drop the pants as well. Hopefully giving us a little bit more space to maneuver some of our spell casting. He's never really been the best at casting spells. Always preferred reading his books and hanging out, perhaps, a little too long in the taverns. So... We'll try to be successful here. We get an okay spawn for a wizard, as we can deal with a lot of these mobs using magic missile. And make sure we're not too, too loud, or really, I don't think it matters if you're loud. People know these spawns now. The Willard's gonna have a tough time escaping, regardless of who he runs into. Runes has been well known to be a very dangerous and high tempo environment, maybe not suited for the solo wizard. But, we must find an information. This is our quest. It's what we were sent here to do, and we do have three very large chests here to loot, which could be, could be exactly what we're looking for. We're gonna loot these as fast as possible and grab that Shrine of Power. Give us at least a little bit of an edge if we do run into any players. Luckily, these shrines, you hit them extremely quickly as a wizard. Unfortunately, we don't get don't get to loot that lion's head, which would have been almost guaranteed that's probably where the ancient scroll is hidden. We find some boots that give us a little bit of magical capacity, but that really won't help us right now. 
gonna grab another ale, which is kind of ironic. One more skeleton to deal with, and then perhaps we should rest, get some of our magic missiles back. As we smash a ton of those into this guy's shield. Also, we'll take a nice little sword swipe to the hip, which will slow us down a little bit. Luckily, not terrible amount of damage. Most of that will be recoverable. Truthfully, these wizards are light as a feather, dying to most any item or weapon quite quickly. One more small chest, which I doubt will hold any sort of great treasure, does give us some gloves and a campfire kit, which could come in handy later. As this cold night air is rushing up Willard's frock, we decide to sit in the grass, try to get some of our magic missiles back. And then we'll also need to rest, get some of our HP back, which feels a little bit odd. It's a lot of resting, a lot of sitting around, a lot of not progressing when you're playing wizard if you make mistakes. So, here we are, sitting in the dark with our pants down. Pretty much exactly how wizard solo gameplay is. You often get caught with your pants down in situations that are just not ideal. Like I said in the past, how you maneuver and deal with those situations kind of gives you the upper hand on Wizard. I think Wizard's an incredibly fun class to play. It's just, personally, not something I've sunk a lot of time into. Just like Willard, we haven't practiced that often with our spells. And, as you may be able to notice, it's quite clear. It's quite clear these novices are lacking that final touch. Trying this one more time, Willard's gonna jump and attempt to launch it over the rock wall, which doesn't work as well. All that does is alert the attackers to our location. Not realizing this guy could just leap over as well, we are in some serious trouble as Willard attempts to make his escape. Maybe, perhaps, Ice Bolt would have been better in that situation as we could have at least got the projectile into the attacker's face. The fireball clipping on a lot of the surrounding environment. And as we're trying to make our escape, we run into more players with looks like even better gear. This is not ideal. Hoping we can get a little bit of movement, we need to put this magic staff away if we're going to try to get any distance, and unfortunately, idiot. yes, it is too late. And perhaps Willard was in fact an idiot, as that human fighter suggested. However, didn't really have much choice there running into multiple teams that now appear not to be fighting each other but chasing down the solo players. Sadly, that was my permadeath journey on those three wizards. I will say, I did play a little bit of wizard after this, just kind of messed around on a more of a, I guess you could say my main account. I had a lot of fun with it. We did go into Howling Crypts just to get a feel for the place again, as I hadn't been there in literally ages. And we end up finding, end up finding this poor, poor man trying to kill some mobs. And this is a much better place fireball. And even though I hit the fireball, I was kind of like, oh shit, I gotta throw another one of these. This guy's not dead. And then, as they push you, you're getting invisibility ready. Try to get some distance, or at least make a play. Luckily for us, he was already dead. The unfortunate part was, he left us. He left us this spear skelly. And a red one at that, which is not very great. We literally have to try to juke this, and we fail. And somehow... Iron Mace was looking out for us as we try to be a little bit successful in our wizard class. As we somehow survive and we're able to kill that skeleton with our magic staff. Which means we get to loot this guy, escape, and make a fair bit of gold considering he had a lot of items on him that we could sell. So, my main wizard I had a lot of fun on. I do think wizard's an amazing class. It's super high tempo. So much, so much you can do with it. Like the intellect commons weren't just about you know, the permadeath journey or the story building. It is in fact a class that requires a lot of skill and thinking and planning out your next move. It also requires a lot of practice. Something I have not done a lot of on Wizard. And truthfully, I'm probably going to go back to fighter class for a while because I seriously need to get better on my fighter. And really just better at the game in general. I haven't been playing as much as usual. I've been extremely busy. And the couple hours a night... Don't give me a lot of time to experiment and learn these classes as much as I would have been able to in the past. So I appreciate you guys sticking through some of these failures. I've had a difficult time piecing some of this stuff together, but I promise you, I 
will make amends and we'll get some of these series going for hopefully a little bit of a longer journey. I love building these regardless and I think there is a story to tell even with these failures and I hugely appreciate you guys sticking around to watch these. So look, thank you all. See you guys all in the next video. And if there are any solo wizards out there, let me know where you're going to enjoy the wizard class or how you're playing it. I feel like solo wizards kind of dropped off a bit. Not sure. Anyway, cheers and I'll see you next time.